Okay, let's dive into a couple stories around the NFL that don't relate to the schedule. Let's go down to Nashville, Tennessee, and the Tennessee Titans. There was a headline I saw that Malik Willis, who they drafted last year in the third round, his job status is in major jeopardy, as in he might not make the team. And my first reaction to that, of course it is. Like, they just drafted a quarterback in the second round. The general manager, John Robinson, who drafted him, is no longer there. They have a new guy in charge in Rand Carthen with Mike Vrabel. It's like, well, same head coach. Well, that same head coach last year, when Malik Willis couldn't hit water if he was sitting in a boat, benched him for Josh Dobbs, who wasn't even on their team, who was on the Lions practice squad in a game at the end of the season that, I don't know, kind of mattered. Remember, they were playing to get into the playoffs, and he wouldn't play the guy. So I think it's clear that the way that season ended, now you get a new GM. Does he have a support system? Does he have people in the building who support and advocate and want to see him succeed. Because if he doesn't, then he's done. Here's what I know about Will Levis. The GM and the head coach clearly liked him for them to pull the trigger to draft him early in the second round. And by all accounts, they were trying to trade in at the end of uh, Thursday night in the first round, in the late 20s, to draft Will Levis. So Will Levis has supporters in the building. Pretty clear Malik Willis doesn't really. I've been in situations in the NFL, in radio, when my support system left. Do you know what happened? I got fired. You know, I lost my job. It happens all the time in pro sports or just in a lot of industries. When the guy you work for leaves or gets let go and they bring in new people and you are not their guy, the moment things get weird, honestly, some things might be out of control. They just don't want to deal with you. And when I, whenever I see the response of, well, what do you think happens when you bring in a developmental project and you don't give them time to develop? To me, there are different types of development. When Josh Allen was drafted, it was clear that year one needed some time to develop. Same with Patrick Mahomes. But both of them, if you watch that, you know, the first year with Josh Allen and the one game with Patrick Mahomes, there, there were just like, okay, you, you could see it. With Malik Willis, I I think he was easily the worst quarterback in the NFL that played last season. I I mean, think about Zach Wilson, for example. I'm all for development, but he couldn't complete wheel routes. He couldn't complete a slant route. Like the most, if I'm an NBA player and I can't make a layup, like I, I can't play. Like, wait, you can't make a layup? Like in football, especially at the highest level, when you're playing on Sundays, go routes are hard. You're going to hit those, I don't even know what the percentage is for the good quarterbacks, 50% of the time, right? But there are going to be some routes that should be a very, very high percentage. And Malik Willis had no shot to complete those. It looked like, does this guy even, should this guy be playing quarterback? And I don't know if he's a good enough athlete to change positions, but from what I witnessed, he's a year away from being a year away. And some quarterbacks change positions for whatever reasons. And to me, Edelman did it. Terrell Pryor did it. I remember watching Terrell Pryor when I had uh, when I did the Raiders post game show, and Terrell Pryor was their quarterback. And ultimately, he just had no chance to. He was athletic enough as a runner, but as a thrower, it wasn't. It, it was a joke. I mean, it was. And he transitioned and he went on to play wide receiver. Now I don't know if Malik Willis is that level of an athlete, but what we witnessed last year, even if he improved, you know. he's still not remotely close to being an NFL quarterback. And a guy, it's the one position, right? Whoever your backup is, there's a chance, you know, he might not play a snap all season long. And then there's a chance, I don't know, Patrick Mahomes rolls his ankle and the guy has to start a game or come in and play in a tight game. And that clearly happened last year to the Titans. And it was a disaster. And I'm not trying to act like Ryan Tannehill is a savior. I wouldn't want him to be my quarterback either. But... The support system for Malik Willis, I, 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 John Robinson never told me this, but it was p- pretty clear Mike Vrabel's not big on him. The GM has zero ties to him and just drafted a quarterback. He's done. You know, he, He's completely done to me playing quarterback in Tennessee. Now, can he do something else? Can he bring other stuff to the table? Because if he can, then maybe he could survive. But what I witnessed last year, now maybe some team would put him on the practice squad, but I have a very, very hard time. And I mean very hard time seeing him being an active roster quarterback in the NFL, let alone on the Titans. So 
to me, it's kind of a non-story. I, I think the story would be if Malik Willis is able to survive. In, in 2023, the amount of money these teams have, you know, no one waits. Like, Trey Lance is already battling to be the backup. Zach Wilson is like, thank God, everyone in Jets, you know, land is like, he doesn't have to start anymore. These guys were the second and third pick in the draft a couple of years ago. We're moving at rapid speed. People aren't worried about signing bonuses and cash. You just you just move on. And then the way the league works is every year new players are coming through. It's the fastest turnover. It's the fastest cycle of kind of working through guys that can't play. So just, oh, he's a third-round pick. Who cares? Brock Purdy was a seventh-round pick, right? I mean, if you flip those two, it would have been dramatically different. The Niners would have been screwed. Maybe the Titans would have been okay. Uh, another story. Matt Ariza, who's known as the punt god, was, it came out last week. He was cut last year, uh, allegedly in a, in a gang rape. He was, he was, there was, I, I don't know all the legal terms. There was an accuser that said that he and other guys at San Diego State gang raped her. And it turns out not only it wasn't true, I don't know if the other guys did, but he was not there. He wasn't present. He had nothing to do with it. And I remember last year when he was cut. Everyone was, you know, the media, and we'll get into them here in a second, was freaking out. And I said, the Bills are not cutting him because they know he did it or they know he did not do it. They have no clue. They cut him simply because he's a punter. And it's like, we can't deal with the potential of this being true, even if we believe you at the position you play. I, 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 I said it. If he had been the quarterback, if he had been the pass rusher, if he had been the star tackle— it would have been different. They would have let it play out. But when you're a six-round punter, you just don't have the juice. Now, there's a bigger picture thing here. And I've always said this, and this goes back to Deshaun Watson. Listen, I, no one ever has any clue when it's a he said, she said thing beside those two people, or in this situation, several people. I don't know, you don't know, and definitely these big J journos don't know. But last year, the reaction with him was very typical. Like, you know, if I tell you a story, if I just make up a hypothetical story, you have a pretty good idea in 2023 what the media reaction is going to be. And I've seen a lot of like former players that are now in the media, like, where's all the people apologizing? All those people that wrote articles, they're not going to apologize. That's not what they do. <laughs> you know, if that's your expectation, like we're all going to be waiting a while. Do you remember the last couple of years? Do you remember all the tweets and the articles from everyone in the media about everything that went on in 2020 and 2021? And then as we've learned that actually they were wrong on the majority of it. Have they said a peep? Of course not. They just move on. So if you think you're going to get some article from the Washington Post or the New York Times that says, my bad, my, next time we should give it a deep breath. Let's see how it plays out. That ain't going to fucking happen. And it never will. So like when the situation happened and you get wrongfully accused, you know, it, it's just, you're in major trouble with public opinion and, and the people that have, I was going to say pens, but that write these articles for a living. Because we all know what those articles are going to say. And then if it goes on, you're proven that it wasn't true. You're not going to get articles saying, we fucked up. We we apologize. You should come back to the NFL, which is a screwed up system. It's why you can't, I don't get caught up in what these people say one way or the other, because they're, they're the most predictable group in this country. You just, you can just give a situation and you know the angle they're going to take. And with him specifically, like, it's tough because it, it, it's bullshit, really. I mean, his career, his life was, I, I don't want to say his life's ruined because he's 22, 23. His career was clearly derailed. Now, will someone take a chance on him now that he has been cleared of wrongdoings? I would imagine so. But there still is like, and, and this is the BS part, is I don't want to say a stigma, but the elephant in the room that follows him, even though he didn't do it. And it gets back to the reaction a year ago. It's just a screwed up cycle. And you go, well, John, you've been hard on Deshaun Watson over the years. Well, yeah, it's like 75 massage therapists. If it was just one or two, I'd say, listen, 
I, I, I feel uncomfortable commenting on things that no one could know beside these two people. But it was just person after person after person. It's like drip, drip, drip. Like, I mean, let's let's all use some common sense here. But last year, like the reaction by so many people that cover the sport, it was just, it was very predictable. And it's always going to be predictable in these situations. And when it comes out after the fact that, yeah, actually it was completely wrong. He didn't do a goddamn thing. It's, it, 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 I, I can't even imagine being in those shoes uh, of Matt Ariza. Now we'll just see, like, I, I would imagine because he is that talented in some of the punts that he had last year in the preseason. Uh, I remember he had like an 82 yard punt that he will get another shot. Uh, I say history shows us that, especially when he has been cleared. Like this guy's not a criminal, uh, but it, it's still, you know, it's such a hot button issue I, I don't know. It's going to be very, very interesting just to see how it plays out. I would say whether it be in the short term, but definitely in the next couple of years, he he will get a shot. Uh, and, and last but not least, I, I read an article while I was reading Albert Breer's, he kind of does this Q&A. And in the Q&A, someone asked, like, will there be tanking this fall because of these quarterbacks, and specifically Caleb? I mean, Caleb's one of the best prospects going into his junior season of my life. Uh, his size, his playmaking, his production, his arm, the, the total package. I mean, he is, I know people that have seen him play live and they're just like, bro, this is not, this is not a hype machine. And we see hype machines a lot. And listen, I can be guilty of that. Like I was, I pounded the table a little bit last year for Will Levis. You saw it this year with Anthony Richardson. You just see it, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance. Hype machine happens with quarterbacks. This is not a hype machine thing. This is, Jesus Christ, this guy's incredible. Like, this guy is a baller, you know? But, I mean, this guy is just an elite prospect. Period, point blank, end of story. It's very, very difficult to tank in the NFL. You can tank a roster and put together the crappiest version of your roster possible, and that's happened. Remember, the Miami Dolphins did it years ago. They won three of their last five games. And they beat the Patriots, remember, at the end of the season that ultimately led them to get in the uh, three seed, which then the uh, the Titans beat them in the first round and their the Brady era ended. And I've actually always kind of defended Stephen Ross. Like, we've come this far, keep tanking. And then they beat the Bengals, which I don't know, led to Joe Burrow. It's kind of changed their franchise. The Dolphins lost to the Bengals. <clears throat> or excuse me, the Dolphins beat the Bengals in overtime. So, you know, in basketball, it's so much easier to tank. It really is because you can just put the crappiest roster humanly possible out there in football. You know, you see it every year, even these terrible teams at the end of the season, coaches try hard, random players try hard. The teams you're playing sometimes don't take you seriously. It's just of all the sports to tank, it's definitely the hardest. I mean, we saw it last year, the Texans to, to win those, what they win like two of their last four games. They definitely won their last game, and Chicago ended up getting the number one pick. Lovey Smith, like, why did he care? And he clearly didn't. Like, they, they, the coaches, the assistant coaches, they try. Um, so a lot of people are going to want Caleb Williams. And by the middle of the season, you know, when you're one and nine or two and twelve, you're gonna, you know, your fan base is going to have him circled. But it's difficult to attain that. It, it, it really is, and we see it year after year. Like, oh, this team is the worst team in the NFL. And they end up drafting four. So, you know, I mean, the Colts were in absolute shambles last year. They, they couldn't have been any worse for the majority of the season. They drafted fourth. Difficult to get that top pick. You know, it, it really is. No matter how hard you try to suck or even you're trying to win. Uh, so, it, you know, the tanking thing, the NFL is very, very lucky that that's an issue that they just don't have to worry about.